Hello, good evening, and welcome to News at 10, live from the studios at Adesawe Kandai and Crime. Stephen Enti, and we're also streaming live on Facebook, and you can catch the, um, TV3 on DSTV Channel 279. Let's start with the major news highlights of the day. Forty Ghanaians made up of 38 males and two females have been deported from the United States of America. The reasons for their deportation include the trafficking of banned substances, assault, vehicle theft, burglary, fraud, domestic violence and immigration related issues. On customers of some savings and loans and finance houses whose licenses have been revoked, trooped into their branches to go through the necessary processes to enable them retrieve their locked up funds. However, some other branches of the defunct financial institutions did not open for business at all. Meanwhile, the director of operations of the Prize Waterhouse Coopers, Kingford Arthur, has allayed the fears of customers of the defunct savings and loans companies and the finance houses. In an exclusive interview with TV3, he said the receiver is engaging the central bank on funds to settle each of them. Welcome back. Now, an Accra Circuit Court has issued a bench warrant for the arrest of some Chinese nationals for failing to appear before it. They've been charged with allowing a ferocious dog at large. The Chinese nationals resident in Tema Community 12 were hauled before the court after they allowed their four bulldogs to bite 21-year-old Chantel Owusuhu was their house help. As a result of the dog bite, Chantel says she's unable to work and now live on the benevolence of some relatives. According to reports, she is not the only house help to have gone through such ordeal. Chantel reported the case to the Domestic and Victim Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service. Officials of Dovsu then filed the case in court on the charge of allowing ferocious dog at large. When the case was called on Monday, though the prosecutor, Agatha Santoa, was in court, both the lawyer and the accused persons did not show up. The prosecution, however, prayed the court for a bench warrant for the arrest, arguing that the accused persons were duly informed of the hearing. The court, presided by her ladyship, Vida Duku, granted the request and issued a warrant for the arrest. The case has been adjourned to September 5. The end savings and loans company has threatened to seek legal redress over the revocation of their license by the central bank. Deputy Executive Chair of the group uh, Indium, Nana Ofori Ousu, says their inclusion in the Bank of Ghana's list is inaccurate and inconsistent. We are saying that GN savings and loans will be liquid if government pay their money today. Today we'll be liquid dealing with our clients, taking care of our customers to ensure that they get the best of service. And part of the issues that we are going to take to the court will be to show proof that yes, indeed, we have money that is owed to us by the government. And the government is refusing to pay. And this Kweku and Nancy tactics that you hold our money with one hand, then you tell us on the other side that we are not liquid. This, this, this doesn't make any rational sense. And we are going to make our case on that. These are all documentations of the transfers that we have been making to IBS, which is a procurement company of Group Indu. So every company that buys their raw materials from, from other parts of the world, we transfer the monies from the company to IBS, which is our oldest company in the group. And they use that money to procure those activities. And we clear it right here at, at, at Ghana Harbors. And we use it for the companies. So this 
issue that we have transferred some unknown monies to, to IBA. It's a preposterous uh, gesture that government is making because we have the documentation to back up all of this. Two boxes of documentations there. The chief executive officer of Men's Gold, Ghana Limited, has offered uh, three propositions to government that will aid him pay his customers. And Apia Mensa is also requesting the Attorney General's Department to aid him to retrieve a 39 million US dollar debt owed him by Horizon Royal Diamond in Dubai. The embattled Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold, Nanapia Mensa, was emphatic. He was never a fugitive. The day before I would depart, I informed the Yoku. As a matter of fact, we can check Yoku's record. Okay, I signed in at their front desk. I visited Yoku the day before I departed our jurisdiction. So I did not escape Ghana to Dubai or any, you know, where in the world. A well-calculated press conference deemed a fight back, but philosophical. The men's gold product line that has been questioned is one that is just an act of innovation characterized by most businesses worldwide. We sought to build a word processor out of a typewriter in our line of business with the hope of being encouraged to create wealth in the face of globalization. Nana Pia Mensa is proposing a way out for his company, Men's Gold, to pay its customers. We at Men's Gold are committed and do express our willingness to service our debt portfolios to our customers and business associates as soon as we can. We respectfully pray the Ghanaian authorities to cooperate with us to achieve the following. Our sisters make full recovery of the amount owed men's gold by Horizon Royal Diamond in Dubai. As an act of good faith, we are willing to engage the Attorney General's office on the best possible way for, the, for them to aid men's gold by employing international law and diplomatic relations to ensure we achieve this objective. To unfreeze our companies and my personal bank account and assets for us to utilize these as vehicles to get productive in order to meet our liabilities. Owe to our customers and some business associates in our bid to resolve our liabilities immediately. The quality of gold, men's gold, offered, described as Orum Italium, came under scrutiny. Nana Pia Mensa went all gun blazing. Orum Italium is gold, is referred to gold dory bar. Okay? When we say gold dory bar, gold that is not 100%, that hasn't got 100% Orum. Okay, Orum is gold, pure gold. That is 24 carats gold, which is 99.99999. Now, so when you see Orum Utalium, what it means is that it is gold of a certain percentage purity or carat, and then a foreign matter. And that foreign matter could be silver, it could be copper. The state has accused number one of using men's gold as a tool to defraud more than 16,000 people of 1.6 billion cities. How many customers do you owe, and in terms of money, how much do you owe them? Respectfully, I would, because we are before a court of law, and these are issues of fact. Now, the court, the, 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 the prosecutions, you know, which is the police, um, they are alleging a certain figure. We are contesting that figure, and we do not have to arm them, you know, so with respect, I would want to um, decline comment on this. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. Meanwhile, the Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold, uh, Nana Pia Mensa, says his decision, uh, his detention, I beg your pardon, in Dubai has made him older than his actual age when he believes he has the mental fortitude to go through prosecution and pay his customers is calling for fairness in the legal process. He was apt in describing his experience in Dubai. The three accused persons described as the principal officers of Men's Gold along with Men's Gold and its sister company Brew Marketing Consults Limited both represented by an Pia have been slapped with 13 counts. The counts are defrauding by false pretenses, abetment to defraud by false pretenses, 
carrying deposit business without license abatement of sale of minerals without license sale of minerals without license abatement to the unlawful deposit taking unlawful deposit taking and money laundering it is a question of statutory interpretation as to whether or not the trading of our gold collectibles or jewelry and the return of monthly profit on same to traders s deposit taking deposit mobilization or trading securities appearing full cost and determined the customers say they have faith today we've heard it from from number one and i'm really encouraged this is gold business it's it's not any other business it's gold business and one thing that i i need to let all of us understand is that as a nation we are in financial crisis you know and of all the companies that, that, that have had problems, it's only Men's Gold and Nam One that has gathered courage to address the media and the customers. On customers of uh, some savings and loans and finance houses whose licenses have been revoked, trooped in to their branches to go through the necessary process to enable them retrieve their locked up funds. However, uh, some other branches of the defunct financial institutions did not open for business at all. George Quading has more in the following reports. The Bank of Ghana on Friday, August 16, we bought the license of 23 insolvent savings and loans and finance houses. A check on some of the branches of the affected institutions Monday morning revealed that they did not open for business. Public notice of the revocation of their license were posted on their doors. At the Ringwood branch of GN Savings and Loans, a customer, Hadia Ajinkok, did not even know that the license of the company had been revoked. The last time I did a withdrawal was, I think, three weeks ago. That was 27 July. But then I traveled. So upon my return, I came. That was last week, Monday. Yes, to make some withdrawals, and I realized the place was locked. So approximately, let's say, seven to eight days now since it was locked. Although the Adabaka branch of Unicredit was also on the lock and key, some customers were inside the banking hall completing validation forms. Customers of Women's World Banking Savings and Loans at Tesano, numbering over 30, were also busily completing validation forms to secure their deposits. Representatives of PricewaterhouseCoopers were tight-lipped over the issue. The Ringwood branch of Idle Finance was closed and had its signages pulled down. There was no sign of business at First Trust Savings and Loans at Jolu. Meanwhile, Bank of Ghana has appointed Eric Nananipa, a director of PricewaterhouseCoopers as receiver for the purpose of winding down the business of the savings and loans and finance houses whose licenses have been revoked. This is the headquarters of the GN Savings and Loans Company right here at Asalam Down in Accra. Evidently, there's no sign of business going on, but right inside, there are some officials from PricewaterhouseCoopers and staff of GN Savings and Loans Company on the way forward. And, uh, and this is a public notice here to customers on the revocation of the license of the company. And I'm told that uh, some customers came here earlier to see clarity and the way forward regarding this very development. Trust TV3 to bring you up to speed on development and how receivership processes will go. And so from Asalam Down, Josh Quedin for TV3. Meanwhile, the Director of Operations at PricewaterhouseCoopers, King Ford Arthur, has allayed the fears of customers of the defunct savings and loans companies and finance houses. In an exclusive interview with TV3, he said the receiver is engaging the central bank on funds to settle each one of them. I mean, considering what we've done in the past with, with uh, Capital Bank and UT, with uh, pre premium bank and heritage, and of course with the 347 uh, microfinance companies. We've, we've had support from government and, and Bank of Ghana, and so I would want to believe that that would happen. But because we have not been specifically told of the, any, any amount, then we would just be speculating. We are still discussing, uh, having discussions with Bank of Ghana to see how we, we raise the funds to do it. It's early days yet. Today is the first full day that we've had on the, on, 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 on the receivership. I would advise that the, the, the key thing for us is to get the depositors to drop their information. And that is where our focus should be.
Right, so you're watching, you're still watching News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawi Kandai and Accra. You can follow us on our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, the Teachers and Education Workers Union, TEWU, wants the Ghana Education Service to suspend any plans to extend the SIC insurance deductions on their salary. According to TEWU, the Ghana Education Service should thoroughly engage members and other stakeholders to forestall any industrial unrest on the uh, deductions. Though the Ghana Education Service, GES, has suspended the August deductions of insurance, TEWU leadership is not satisfied. According to the leadership of TEWU, the GES management should rather suspend it indefinitely until broader consultations are done to address the challenges. Acting General Secretary of TEWU, Mark Crunchy, said the GES should allow interested persons to take part rather than enrolling them en bloc. We think that we need a, a bit more time. Uh, at the meeting, uh, one group suggested two months. But for us, we think that let's sit and do the plan. The plan may take six weeks, the plan may take eight weeks or 10 weeks. So until that sensitization is completed, um, you cannot go into this, this policy again because we think that it is a breach of the law. The union again raised concerns about delays in the promotion of its members and also providing markets premium to members of TEU nationwide. If there is any way that they can fast track the backlog of promotions, we are in for it. So they should bring the document, let's look at it and see how best it will help our members so that the backlog of promotions sometimes if you go into the system somebody has been due for promotion in the last five years and they are still waiting they are still marking time and it doesn't help it doesn't motivate the staff to give of their best but education is so crucial and we don't want people to be sitting on the fence the union called on the GES to address issues on the 20% intervention fund allocated to its members, which it describes as inadequate. Tewu further called for the recruitment of more staff into the service to stop teachers from engaging in non-teaching duties. He remains a teacher. He gets all the allowances that teachers get, and yet he will be performing a non-teaching function. And that, we think, it's not fair and we must be looked at critically. On the ongoing curriculum review, Chairman of Tewu, Peter K. Lumor, had this to say. GES have managed education all this time. If the politicians are put, pushing GES management, they should have the courage and tell the politicians, please, this is a professional work. Allow us to do our professional work and you do your politics. And 40 Ghanaians made up of 38 males and two females have been deported from the United States of America. Reasons for their deportation include the trafficking of banned substances, assault, vehicle theft, burglary, fraud, domestic violence and immigration related issues. A statement issued by the Assistant Superintendent of Immigration in charge of public relations at the Kotoka International Airport, Barbara Sam, indicated that the deportees, aged between 21 and 70 years, arrived on board a chartered flight from U.S. Omni Air International, Boeing 777-OAE-328. 38 of them arrived on travel certificate issued by the Ghana Mission in Washington, D.C., and the remaining two on Ghanaian passports. The deportees are from various regions in Ghana, with 16 from Greater Accra, 10 from Ashanti, 2 from Bono, 2 from Western, 2 from Central, 3 from Eastern, and 3 from the Volta. In a similar development, a statement added that 12 Ghanaian females aged between 20 and 30 have also been deported from Saudi Arabia for illegal stay. They are mostly junior and senior high school graduates and were working as domestic helps, storekeepers and fuel attendants. 
Now, persons living with disability in the Crow or municipality of the Greater Accra region besieged the premises of the Assembly to protest alleged corrupt practices in the disbursement of the Disability Common Fund. Stanley Nibleo reports the Assembly is yet to disburse its maiden allocation, although it has received funds for four quarters. Crowell was carved out from the Lejokuku Crowell municipality of the Greater Accra region last year. According to the Municipal Assembly, 106,000 cities for the four allocations comprising the second, third and fourth quarters for 2018 and the first quarter of 2019 would only cater for about 70 persons. However, the sum of funds earmarked for the total disbursement stood at 124,367 cities, a difference of 35,635 cities. Persons with disability in the municipality accused the assembly of embezzling the funds. They also accused the Social Welfare Office of bias in selecting beneficiaries for the fund. <laughs> We have messed up here because the assembly has shortchanged us for far too long. It is not our wish to become disabled, so funds due us should be given to us. I want to see if management or head of this municipal assembly will be able to come down to our dear sisters and brothers with a new model of disbursement. This is the problem. For some PWDs, they are concerned about not being engaged in the procurement process. The Municipal Social Welfare Officer, Evelyn Nangbingning's explanation did not go down well with the protesters. Common fans say, my emphasis is cash and for mamu. You enter items in the mamu. O bin su wa ha, tie 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 tie. It took the intervention of the municipal chief executive, Joshua Niborte, to calm the angry PWDs. He assured them of fast tracking and disbursement process. Under my watch, your money is not going to be missing. We are transparent. We love you and we care. We are a flat, a flat, a flat. There are more than 500 persons with disability in the municipality, but records at the Municipal Social Welfare Department puts the figure at 256 to benefit from the fund. Right, uh, that's how we wrap up with News at 10. I'm Stephen Enti. Thanks for your time, and on behalf of the crew, good night. There's more news at 3news.com.